Hey dear, welcome back to the world of cross-dressing stories. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Now, let's dive into the story. In a quaint town where every street corner was bathed in the glow of familiarity and every greeting carried years of unspoken history, I found myself a bit of an anomaly. My name is Lucas, the youngest of three boys in a family known for its piety and community spirit. It was the late 1990s, and our lives revolved around the rhythms of church bells and seasonal festivals. Our home was a fortress of traditional values, led by my parents who devoted themselves to faith and community work with fervor that left little room for deviation. My brothers fit perfectly into this world, their lives a seamless thread in the fabric of our town's conservative tapestry. But beneath my playful, rough-and-tumble exterior, I harbored a secret that felt too vibrant, too delicate to expose in the grayscale world of my family's expectations. From a very young age, I felt an inexplicable pull towards the soft whispers of fabric that hung in my mother's closet, the silky scarves, the fluttery dresses. It wasn't just the colors or the textures that captivated me. It was the transformation they promised, a chance to express a part of myself that I couldn't even name yet. In the dead of night, I would sometimes sneak into her room, my heart pounding a frantic rhythm, and wrap myself in the quiet luxury of her evening gown. Standing in front of the mirror, I saw a version of myself that felt more complete. Constance, our neighbor's daughter, was unlike anyone in our town. With her Brazilian roots and a smile that seemed to understand secrets without having to whisper them, she brought a breeze of change each time she stepped into our house. Her presence was a vivid contrast to the subdued tones of our community. She was confident, her laughter easy, and her demeanor kind, yet there was a sharpness in her eyes, a recognition of things unspoken. I often watched Constance from my window, admiring how she moved with a grace that was unapologetic and pure. She was everything that our small town wasn't, and everything that I wished I could be. Her dresses weren't just clothes, they were declarations of freedom, each pleat and fold a verse of a poem I yearned to understand. As I grappled with these hidden desires, the divide between who I was expected to be and who I wanted to be grew wider. I learned to cloak my yearnings in shadows, burying them under layers of feigned interest in sports and mechanical toys, the acceptable hobbies for a boy in our town. My parents, ever so absorbed in their duties, remained blissfully unaware of the silent battles their youngest son fought. Concealed desires were like silent whispers in the attic, present and persistent, yet invisible. And every day, I walked a tightrope of pretense, balancing the weight of tradition on my shoulders while clutching my true self close, wrapped in secrecy, waiting for a chance to breathe. On a crisp autumn evening, as the leaves began their colorful descent from the lofty trees, my parents prepared to attend another church event. It was not unusual for them to leave us under the care of a babysitter, but tonight felt different right from the start. Constance was coming over to watch us. As my brothers busied themselves with the typical chaos of getting ready to impress yet another sitter, I felt a nervous excitement at the thought of spending the evening under Constance's care. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across our front yard, Constance arrived. She swept through our doorway like a breath of fresh air, her presence immediately altering the atmosphere of our home. Dressed in a vibrant dress that danced around her knees, she greeted my parents with a confident smile, promising a fun evening for us all. Once my parents left, Constance didn't waste time turning on the television or finding ways to passively manage us. Instead, she knelt to our level, her eyes twinkling with genuine interest, and asked us what we loved to do. My brothers eagerly shared their love for action-packed games and outdoor adventures. I, on the other hand, remained quiet, unsure how to voice my own interests that seemed so detached from their energetic pursuits. Noticing my hesitance, Constance gently nudged me aside and asked in a soft, encouraging tone, And what about you, Lucas? What do you like to do? Her question, simple and direct, felt like an invitation to open a door I had kept firmly closed. It was the first time anyone had shown a desire to peek into my world without judgment. As the evening progressed, Constance engaged my brothers in a vigorous game of hide-and-seek, which they played with loud whoops and dashes around the house. With them occupied, Constance turned her full attention back to me. 
She suggested we find a quiet activity, something just for us. We settled in the living room with colored pencils and paper, and as we drew, the conversation flowed more freely. With every gentle question and thoughtful nod, Constance wove a tapestry of safety around us. I found myself talking about school, my friends, and eventually, haltingly, about how much I admired the clothes she wore. Her response was immediate and warm. Thank you, Lucas. I love expressing myself through my clothes. It's important to wear what makes us feel good, don't you think? Her words, so simple yet so profound, made something click inside me. Here was someone who could understand. Encouraged, I ventured further, driven by a newfound trust. Sometimes, I like to imagine what it would be like to wear clothes like yours. They always look so beautiful. Constance didn't skip a beat. Her acceptance was as natural as her smile. That's wonderful, Lucas. Clothes are for everyone, and you should wear what makes you happy. Her affirmation felt like a balm to my long-hidden wounds. That night, with Constance's gentle encouragement, I felt the first threads of my concealed desires begin to unravel, revealing the vibrant colors of my true self beneath. She became not just a babysitter, but a confidant, an unexpected ally in a world that seemed so intent on keeping me confined to expectations. As the evening wore on, the house filled with laughter and the warm glow of acceptance, making it one of the most memorable nights of my young life. The house had quieted down, with my brothers finally succumbing to sleep after a spirited evening of games orchestrated by Constance. Their laughter and footsteps faded into a distant murmur, leaving Constance and me alone in the soft, ambient light of the living room. The moment felt fragile, like the calm before a storm, filled with the promise of something transformative. Constance's eyes met mine, a gentle invitation hanging silently between us. Lucas, she began, her voice as soft as the evening breeze, if there's anything else you'd like to share or do, this is a safe space. I'm here for you. Her words, simple yet profound, nudged the door to my secret world further open. Encouraged by her unwavering kindness, I gathered every ounce of courage I possessed. My voice trembled slightly as I whispered, Constance, I, I sometimes wear clothes that aren't, aren't what boys are expected to wear. The confession hung in the air, a delicate truth exposed under her attentive gaze. Constance's response was a smile, warm and radiant. Thank you for trusting me with that, Lucas. It's okay to wear whatever makes you feel happy and comfortable. Would you like to share more about this with me? Her acceptance felt like a lifeline thrown across the turbulent sea of my fears. Bolstered by her support, I nodded and for the first time shared the depth of my yearnings to wear dresses not just in hidden moments but as a true expression of myself. Seeing the mixture of thrill and anxiety in my eyes, Constance proposed something that would forever change the course of that evening. Next time I come over, I can bring something for you to wear, something that you'll love something that lets you be you. The offer was exhilarating, yet terrifying. The joy of anticipation was tinged with the fear of discovery. But under Constance's gentle encouragement, I felt a rare sense of freedom, the freedom to be myself. As the night deepened, Constance helped orchestrate a plan that seemed straight out of a covert operation. She gently ushered my brothers into another room, setting them up with a movie that promised to keep them distracted and sleepy. Once they were settled, she returned to me, her eyes gleaming with a conspiratorial spark. Now, let's see about finding you something wonderful to wear tonight, she whispered, as if sharing a precious secret. From her bag, she pulled out a soft, flowing nightgown, a garment that seemed to capture the essence of all my hidden dreams. The fabric was gentle, a whisper against the skin, colored in a soft shade of sky blue. With trembling hands, I took the gown from her, the fabric cool and silky. As I changed behind the screen Constance had set up in the corner of the room, my heart raced with a tumult of emotions. Joy for the beautiful reality of the gown, fear of what it meant to step out dressed in my truth, and an overwhelming sense of gratitude towards Constance. Dressed in the gown, I stepped out, feeling a vulnerability I had never known. Constance smiled, her eyes soft and encouraging. You look wonderful, Lucas, she said, and those simple words felt like a benediction. To calm my fluttering heart, Constance sat by my side and began to sing a lullaby in Portuguese, her voice a soothing melody that wrapped around us like a warm embrace. 
The song was about stars guiding one home, a metaphor that felt apt for the journey I was on. As she sang, the fears and doubts melted away, leaving behind a profound sense of being seen, understood, and cherished. This moment with Constance, under the gentle glow of the lamp and the tender notes of her lullaby, marked a pivotal chapter in my life, a revelation of who I was and who I could become. The serene lullaby eventually ebbed into the quiet hum of the night, and under its calming spell, I drifted into sleep. The soft fabric of the gown enfolded me, each breath weaving deeper into dreams where I was free to be myself, unbound by the constraints of day. It was a night of profound peace, a stark contrast to the tumultuous whirlwind of emotions that had led up to it. As the first light of dawn crept through the curtains, reality began to seep back into my consciousness. I stirred, the silky fabric whispering against my skin, a reminder of the evening's revelations. Panic flared within me as the implications of my attire dawned anew. My parents would soon be home, and the thought of them discovering me like this sent a shiver of fear racing through my heart. The very fabric that had offered such comfort through the night now felt like a glaring beacon of my deepest secrets. But even in my half-awake state, I wasn't alone. Constance, ever vigilant, had stayed awake, perhaps understanding the gravity of what morning would bring. As I blinked into the dim light, trying to piece together a plan, she was already in motion. With a calm efficiency that belied the early hour, she gently woke me. Lucas, let's get you ready, she whispered, her voice both comforting and decisive. In a quiet flurry of movement, Constance helped me out of the gown, folding it with a care that seemed to honor its significance. She returned me to my usual pajamas, a transformation back to the persona I presented to the world. As I changed, my emotions were a tangled mix of relief and a poignant sadness at shedding a part of myself that felt so true. With the gown safely tucked away and my appearance seamlessly reverted, Constance turned her attention to erasing any other signs of the previous night's activities. She was meticulous, moving through the room with a grace that ensured everything was as it had been, leaving no trace of the journey I had embarked upon under her watch. As we heard the familiar sound of my parents' car pulling into the driveway, a final look passed between Constance and me, a silent pact of shared secrets and mutual understanding. The moment was brief but heavy with unspoken promises of protection and future confidences. My parents entered the home filled with the usual post-event cheer, their spirits high and voices filled with the echoes of a successful night. They found us in the living room, the picture of normalcy, with Constance poised as the perfect babysitter. My mother, ever expressive, was quick to praise Constance, commending her on a job well done. You must have the magic touch. Everyone is up and ready for the day. Could we be so lucky to have you again? She asked, her smile wide and appreciative. Little did she know, her words affirmed much more than a night of simple babysitting. They unknowingly celebrated an act that allowed her son to explore a truth about himself, an act that could very well challenge the very fabric of their beliefs if ever brought to light. Constance responded with a modest nod, her smile hiding the depth of what had transpired. As my parents bustled around, ready to return to the rhythm of our daily lives, I watched Constance gather her things. There was a new layer to my world now, a secret depth that only she and I knew. The morning after, with its rush of normalcy and close calls, left me with a profound sense of gratitude for Constance, my unexpected guardian who navigated the complexities of acceptance and secrecy with an unfaltering grace. As the morning unfolded with the usual routines and my family's cheerful banter, my mind wandered to the corners of quiet contemplation. There was an undercurrent of anticipation mixed with uncertainty that swirled within me, set into motion by last night's revelations and the gentle acceptance I had received from Constance. The fabric of the gown she promised to bring next time felt almost tangible in my thoughts, each thread woven with the potential of exploring more about who I was beneath the surface. This secret garment represented not just an article of clothing, but a gateway to understanding the deeper aspects of my identity and desires. The very idea of it stirred a mix of exhilaration and apprehension within me. How far could I walk this path of self-discovery? What would I find at the end of it? 
These questions hung in the air like the delicate early morning mist, invisible yet palpably present. As I moved through the day, interacting with my family and performing my usual tasks, there was a part of me that remained detached, introspective, delving into the implications of embracing this hidden part of myself more fully. The potential for joy in this exploration was immense, yet so was the risk of fracturing the delicate balance of my current life. In this web of uncertainties, the promise of Constance's next visit was a beacon. Her understanding and support had opened a door I had long thought locked, and the thought of her return brought a surge of hope. Yet, with this hope came the shadow of potential conflicts. My family, bound by traditional values and unaware of my internal struggles, might not understand or accept this facet of me. How would I navigate the waters if they ever rippled beyond the confines of my controlled revelations? The days leading up to her return were filled with a quiet tension, a mixture of eager anticipation and nervous apprehension. Each passing moment was a step closer to another encounter with my true self and the complexities that came with it. The secrecy of it all added a thrill, but also a weight, a responsibility to maintain the facade that had been my armor for so long. As the day of her arrival approached, my heart beat with a mix of fear and excitement. The house, filled with the mundane sounds of life, seemed to echo back my fraught emotions, each creak and whisper, a reminder of the journey I was on. I found myself frequently glancing at the clock, counting down the minutes until she would walk through the door, bringing with her the promise of further discovery and perhaps, more dauntingly, the catalyst for change. When at last the day arrived, the sun seemed to hang a bit lower, casting long shadows that mirrored my conflicted emotions. As I heard her familiar footsteps approaching, a sense of destiny filled me. This wasn't just another visit, it was a stepping stone to a future rife with possibilities and uncertainties. The door opened and there she was, her presence as comforting and exhilarating as ever. Her smile, a mix of reassurance and mischief, seemed to say, ready for more? And though my heart skipped with both delight and dread, I knew I was. As she crossed the threshold, the story of my future seemed to unfold with each step she took, each one a promise of the chapters yet to be written, filled with explorations of identity and the inevitable challenges they would bring. This was not just the continuation of a secret, but the beginning of a transformation, one that held the power to reshape my world. 